Mega level. level. Omega, Omega level. Omega level. No other being has ever had the might, nay, the nobility. Hey, how's it going? It's your boy, Jersh Manhunter. Make sure you check out our social medias, Instagram, Omega underscore level underscore podcast, and at Facebook, Omega Level Podcast. Anywhere you can listen to podcasts, you can find us at Omega Level Podcast. Man, that's a lot of podcasts, but here we go. Anchor, iTunes, Google Podcasts, Stitcher, sure, that's a thing, and all of the other ones. Thanks for listening. Hey, welcome welcome back. (laughs) Welcome back to Omega Level. We're going to be doing our comic book episode today. Yeah, 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 yeah. And this week, we're going to talk about the new issue. Well, it's new for us, but when this episode (laughs) comes out, there's going to be another issue out. I was about to say, uh, we're going to be talking about issue seven of Guardians of the Galaxy. By the time you're hearing this, uh, issue eight will be out for a week. Yeah. And we're also going to go talk about issue one of Absolute Carnage. Boo. And so there's a little kavat with the Carnage series for us. It's the this is the big event which I didn't know when I started it uh, that it was like a all encompassing event. Absolute Carnage, the actual title book, is only five issues long, but there's like twenty eight total issues that tie into this. If this ends up being like War for the Realms, where everything is important, we are probably gonna make separate episodes only about Absolute Carnage. There'll be smaller, shorter episodes, like maybe twenty thirty minutes, maybe less than that, where we just talk about the Absolute Carnage books. Because we want to cover the whole event. Like, it's starting off very well. I'm very yeah. interested. But if it's like Infinity Warps, where all the tie ins aren't necessary to the main story, we're not going to cover them on the show. We're just going to do the five Absolute Carnage books. So we won't really know until they all come out on Wednesday. Mm-hmm. Well, two more come out, and I'm going to read them as soon as they drop like, and see. This Wednesday? Yeah, this Wednesday. Oh, wow. Two of them come out this That's Wednesday. The, uh, scream and whatever? Yeah, Scream and something else. Okay. Uh, I think first Deadpool and Scream are the first that come out. No way. Deadpool already? I, I think so, yeah. Wow. I mean, he did have five symbiotes at one point, so yeah. it makes sense why he'd be. And Steven, <laughs> I was telling him about, like, he's like, oh, yeah, I'm assuming there'll be a Deadpool one because he had that. And I was like, oh, here. And I send him the picture of all oh, the. He didn't he's even like, know. Oh, wow. He's like, yeah, it and makes said, sense. He's like, I think there's going to have a few tie ins. I was like, did you have no idea? I sent him the picture. He said, <laughs> he said God damn. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, a few. Yeah. He said, it, the format where it lists all the tie ins is laid out exactly like the Infinity Warps format was laid out, and that wasn't all crucial information. I read everything in that, and you only needed the Infinity Warps or Wars books themselves. Yeah. You didn't need everything else. What about the Infinity Warps? It's the same thing. Okay. The series was called Infinity Wars, but like fans have been he referred to it, it as guys. Warps. He didn't catch it. What? Oh, it's literally Warps? Yeah. Like, that's actually... The fans oh, call I thought you were making a no. mistake. Oh. Because the universe is Never called mind, the, the Warped... Mind, un- it's the Warped Universe okay. that all the new characters came from. Okay. Yeah. So like fan, fan-wise, it's called Infinity Wars, but the actual series was called Infinity Wars. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So it's, yeah, it's called like both. Yeah, Infinity War Saga. That's Confusing. Not- <laughs> yeah, it's that one. So yeah, we're going to talk about those two uh, comic books today. Uh, the Don and Kate's Power Hour. Yeah, my God, dude. It's like, we're the Omega Level Don and Kate's podcast. That's like, what we are. He's writing Absolute Carnage, Guardians of the Galaxy, and Silver Surfer Black right now, and we're reading all three and doing them on the show. And Josh has been starting to read his Venom series that mm-hmm. he's still doing right now. It's so, like mm-hmm. everything that Donnie is writing, Which Josh this is kind is of currently spoiled reading. some stuff already. But About the Venom? Yeah, yeah. it is what it is. I've read but it's weird because I've only read six, and the last one he gets separated from his symbiote. So from it's Venom? Like, is, is the next, like, 12 that I'm about to read, like, not Venom? Like, not Eddie Brock? Because this picks maybe? up, he's like, because oh, at the beginning, he's like, I've been separated from my uh, other. From Venom for a long yeah. time, yeah. I was like, so did I just read six and then that's it? I don't know, we'll see. And maybe it's someone besides it's Brock? A dope-ass movie. I don't know, I don't know. Dope-ass what? Uh, m- moment. Oh, okay. Like he, how he got rid of somebody and everything. It was, oh, it was nice. fucking intense. Nice. Yeah, it was intense. Nice. I've read some of Noah's that. No, it's no been joke. a long time. No, it's no joke. No, no, it's a beast. It's just so funny. You're you're doing these things to try to fight him for the, uh, like you're trying to fight the god of what you're wearing. Like it corrupts him. If he's in the vicinity, he can control it. it does not matter. It is just it's his. This he's, is my child. Come to me. He's broken. They bow down to him. They fear him. They've never. He's like I've never felt something like this before ever. It's screaming in my head every mm-hmm. time Noel's just around, and it's not even him because he's still on this planet, yeah. trapped by other fucking symbiotes. Yeah, warped by billions of his his children <laughs> in the abyss because he's th- because now they've official. I don't know if this is true. Or it has to be because it's written. You know, mm-hmm. uh, but he was before. Everything. Yeah, he's like the first being. Yeah, yeah, he's the first thing that was cast aside. They're like, "Oh, you're get the fuck out of here." He's like, like the okay. first sentient life. They was sent null. me to darkness. That was a mistake. Yeah, because mm. he like is darkness. The lore's in venom, baby. <laughs> so I guess let's start off talking about Carnage. Yoot. Since we're already kind of talking let's about do it. it. Fuck it, man. Fuck it. Spider Man. Miles. <laughs> Stuff. <laughs> Stuff. Dang. Maker. Miguel. Rex. Rex. He's from Venom. Yeah. They mentioned it like quickly in AC. Scream oh. is another Venom character too. Yeah. 
And I don't know which one he is because they didn't say who Rex was wearing because he's a he's wearing one as well. Right. In Venom series, and I don't know they didn't say like what he who was. actually the person yeah. is. Yeah. I don't know what he's wearing because that that dude's been dead apparently. Oh, Rex has been dead. They, he took him over in like World War Two or something like that. Yeah. Also, oh, his host is just dead. He's just yeah. He's That's like, fucking hey, crazy. It's me. It's just me. Probably I'm, just some I'm, random person. I don't. It's just my life. <laughs> <laughs> this is what I do now. This is what I do. So I guess they're never separated. Yeah. This would be a dead ass body. Uh-huh. <laughs> so Absolute Carnage starts off. It is broken into three chapters. And we're going to change the format a bit for this episode of how we cover it. And if we end up liking this, probably how we do it moving forward. Probably not. <laughs> probably not. Yeah, probably not. Yeah, so yeah, Absolute yeah. Carnage is split into three chapters. It's a, lo- it's a big book. It's about 55, 60 pages. It's a double issue. But it's split into three, so it seems like it's three issues, but it's, it's two, like lengthwise. And the first chapter is called The Bleeding King, which was a dope. All these chapters have dope names. First one was okay. I mean, like when chapter I w- wise? Yeah, yeah, chapter yeah. wise. Is that right? Yeah. Because right. I was very confused. I didn't realize it was going to be that. I was like, it said 310. I was like, okay, well, that's fucking it. It's just joke. the director's cut. But then I'm, I'm reading it, and I'm like, I mean, that was, that was solid. I don't know how much we're going to be able to talk about that. And then, of course, you it convey to me, going. like, hey, just keep reading it. And I was like, okay. <laughs> <laughs> like, that makes sense. That makes sense. So this starts off with what we just talked about. It explains Noel, and that has existed before everything, and he's a. He lived in the endless nothing, which is called the abyss. Mm-hmm. And then Noel created the symbiotes, or sorry, the um, symbiote. symbiotes. They are all symbiote, like, symbiote. Yeah, you know. the symbiotes are all his children. He created all of them. They're all droppings off of him. And over time, billions of them formed a cage around Noel in a, the size of a planet to imprison him. And then Noel went into like a sleep. So he's like in a sleeping state right now. Mm-hmm. But God is trying to be awoke. Yeah, dude. It's yeah, mm-hmm. it's crazy. And when a symbiote bonds bonds to a host, they imprint a piece of themselves in the host's DNA, and they are calling that the codex. So every host has a codex in them. Mm-hmm. And the plan right now, it seems, for Carnage is to find all of the hosts and extract the codices from them and put them all together so that he can reconnect back to the hive, which is what the conglomerate of all the symbiotes are, mm-hmm. and try to awaken Null. I don't know why he wants to awaken Null. No one knows that yet. Well, he's also apparently been imbued with some sort of god. I think he's yeah, being enhanced Karn is by like Null. Karn is like uh, a god now, Because they too. say a word in there, I didn't. I haven't read it, where they talk about the cult of Null. Yeah, like, exactly. That's what Carnage mm-hmm. is, like, why he's the way he is right now, why mm-hmm. Cletus is the way he is. I mean, he's a fucking serial killer. Yeah. Like, one of the worst. Like, his numbers, they even said... Ed they was, say like, they he's say, the worst ever on the planet. Yeah, like, yeah. Uh, well, I don't remember what he said, like, but referring to bad people, like, they could only dream to have his numbers. Mm-hmm. Like, oh my God, dude. No, like, dictators and, like, yeah, all this other shit. Like, they like, can only like, dream to have the numbers have Carnage has, yeah. that, Cletus, well, that Cletus has. It's like, fuck, dude. That dude's fucking crazy. And then he gets the Carnage fucking symbiote on, making him even more crazy. Yeah, why not? Which Carnage, for those that may not know, is the son of Venom. The Carnage symbiote is a dropping off of Venom. Hmm. So it's his son. But it infected Cletus, which caused it to go that way, right? Well, it was like, like Venom, it wasn't supposed to be Venom that. itself was orig- like the symbiote itself was bad. It yeah. was like villainous. Yeah. And um, throughout time, at one point, they took it back to the symbiote planet, like the actual planet, and it got put in this thing called the cleansing. And it got cleansed and became like a pure thing. So it was good now. It wasn't evil anymore. But it has infected other, well, it's bonded with other people and it's bonded with not such good people sometimes other than Eddie Brock that have kind of warped it and turned it to being like good and bad. First person ever infected, Spooderman. Well, well yes, but yeah, the Spiderman. Yeah, Speederman. he was the first one and it was still evil when it infected him. Mm-hmm. So Carnage, when it well, dropped off Venom, it was quote unquote birth. They don't get birth, they're like droppings off of him, was uh, off of Venom. So it already had some kind of like it's budding. They, they pr- reproduce like sponges. Yeah, it already had some kind of like evil in it, but yeah, then when I got with Cassie, it was like unlocked them the, all that evil within it. it, made said, it even Whoa, worse. you're crazy. I <laughs> love it. Yeah, it made it even <laughs> worse. <laughs> like the wrong person to get a symbiote is fucking Cletus Cassidy. He just looks so good in red. Well, he definitely does, dude. He's a fucking nutcase. Yeah, so uh, yeah, he's trying to get all the, all the codex, all the codices to awaken Null. And then we see Eddie, Eddie Brock and a child who is Dylan and it is his son, but Dylan doesn't know that. Dylan thinks that he is Eddie Brock's younger brother. Because Eddie doesn't want to tell Venom that he's his son, because then it'll become, like, real, and he doesn't want to, like... like, dog, this is already real. Danger. Yeah, he's <laughs> it's already real. It's like, trust me, man, it's awful not, like, growing up without, like, a parent. Like, you should tell him. He's he needs like to me. know. <laughs> and then uh, Eddie senses, like, something is going wrong, and he... he realizes that they're being followed. So him and Dylan take off running and they go to the subway and they're like waiting on the sub train and then lo and behold, fucking Carnage shows up and he shoves them into the fucking train tracks and then right as he's about to devour them and kill them, 
fucking Venom comes in and saves the day and then rebonds with Eddie Brock. He's like, I've never really gone. I was watching you. Yeah, yeah I was like, I've always been watching over you. And they get in this big tussle, and like, Venom is trying to tell him, like, yo, we can't do this shit. Like, he's different now. Yeah. Like, we can't fight him. We barely even survived last time. And we have to have a more connection. They weren't fully connected. Yeah, he's not, like, I yeah. can't do this again. Mm-hmm. And he's like, no, we have to. We and that's when, survive. that's when Cornish says, I'm something more now. I am a god. And it's like, oh, mm-hmm. shit. So mm-hmm. Cornish is even more powerful. And this design is dope as fuck. Yeah. And he I'm assuming. Cemented. And I'm assuming with this design, because they mention it in the, uh, I think, chapter two or chapter three. With the Seltons? Uh, because when, they, when they're fighting on the, they, he stops the train, mm-hmm. cops show up, and he's like, you guys need to get out of here. Yeah. Like, there's so much worse. Oh, it's too late. Carnage comes in and just starts fucking wreaking havoc. Uh, and then he uses electricity. And then later in the other one, in the uh, one of the next chapters, he mentions that sound doesn't work on him anymore. Yeah, only like Sound has always worked on Carnage. Yeah. So I'm assuming that now with this upgrade, mm-hmm. you know, because that's what Venom got upgraded in Venom. Uh, in, in the his, series mm-hmm, too, because yeah. of the connection of Noel, mm-hmm. that that brought like it upgraded Venom again. That's why he like, kind of made him fly. more powerful. He flies, dog. He oh, has wings. Nice. He creates fucking wings. Oh yeah, yeah. Venom is a beast now. He's better <laughs> than ever. Like Venom's already been strong. He's like fucking better than ever. It's awesome. But well, that connection to Noel caused them to be more powerful. It's mm-hmm. awesome. Yeah, I mean. So yeah, no. You connect to your creator. Even been. more powerful. Mm-hmm. Fucking crazy as shit. So yeah, they get in that tussle and they electrocute him like uh, Venom grabs the rails and yep. then grabs Carnage and electrocutes the fuck out of him. Yeah, and it hurts him too. Yeah, it hurts yeah. The both of them. And like it really it's like your hurts brain's Eddie. hemorrhaging. Yeah, it really hurts Eddie. His brain's hemorrhaging, he's fucking dying. And Venom's like, We need to get the fuck out of here so that I can heal you. Like I can help you, but we have to leave. He mentions that he gets punches like I've never been punched like that. Yeah, you're right. It's like I've never like, been his hit that is hard. different. Yeah. yeah. And he's like, Hey, your brain's but I can fix that, but we need to get out of here. Yeah. <laughs> so they do escape and then Venom puts Eddie Brock into like a coma so that they can heal him. Mm-hmm. And Dylan's like trying to talk to him, and it's Venom talking back to Dylan. He's like, he's not, Eddie's not here right now. <laughs> he's like, I put him to sleep in a coma so that I can heal him because he's like really hurt. He's like, but I'll awaken him when we get to where we're going. And he's like, where are we going? And then they finally get there, and he's like, all right, I'll wake Eddie up now so we can deal with this. And he wakes Eddie up, and like Dylan's like, where are we? And Eddie's like, remember that trouble I was talking about earlier? That's where we are. And then he knocks on the door, and someone answers the door that appears to be Miles Morales. Mm-hmm. And he sees Eddie Brock, and he's like, uh, what? Why are you here? And then he turns around and goes, Parker, it's for you. And then we see a shot of Peter Parker in his room putting on, like, looks like he just took off the Spider-Man mask. And he's like, halfway got his, like, Spider-Man, like, outfit off. And he's, like, turning a little to the like side. He's, like, more jacked than usual. Yeah, and he looks like, fucking he's ripped. Pretty, he's pretty yeah. ripped. And then that was the end of Chapter 1. So essentially, just in Chapter 1, we get a little exposition about Noel, a little bit about um, Eddie and Dylan. I think it's kind of important that they keyed in on Dylan. He's going to have something. He's going to matter later. He's going to get infected. Yeah, probably. And then well, no, yeah, no, no. it reuni- reunites Spider-Man and fucking Venom and introduces Carnage to us to show us that he's a, uh, that he's a god now and that he is going to be uber mega powerful, which they illustrate as we continue reading. Yeah. And how just broken he is now. Fucking unreal. He can infect anything at any point, apparently. Dude, it's unreal. Yeah. And then chapter two is called Godson. Mm. Which, gee, I wonder who that's talking about. Couldn't be Carnage, could it? No. Couldn't be Carnage. No, 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 no. No, definitely not. Not absolutely not. So in this uh, chapter, we have Venom and Spider-Man sitting at a diner with Dylan. <laughs> What's funny is Spider-Man's just full in uniform. Just full Spider-Man outfit talking to these two people. And like no one's like, oh, Spider-Man! Like Everyone's just like, oh, it's Spidey. He's still all the time. Fuck it. <laughs> He's always Let around. Let him do his thing. He's always around. So they're having a conversation, and Venom, or Eddie, is trying to, to convince Spider-Man to help them. Like, they need to band together to try to defeat Carnage. Otherwise, it's not going to work. And on the TV, they see this news report that they have uncovered this massive gravesite that they're calling the Nest. And in this gravesite are all these bodies, and the way that it was built and constructed makes it obvious that it was meant to be found. Oh, yeah. And, and some bodies were there for, like, they've been dead for a very long yeah, time. Yeah, they've been, like, they transported just, yeah. there. Yeah. And one of the people that was there that they uncovered the bodies was fucking General Ross, who is Red Hulk, who was in fact, not in fact, I can't want to say infected, who was bonded with Venom for a short period of time. Mm-hmm. So he has a codex. So he was fucking killed by, I'm guessing, Carnage. So I'm assuming everyone in that thing was a co- well, has a codex. Yeah. And Venom, uh, Eddie Brock tells Spider-Man, too. He's like, man, this is a message. You don't get it. It's a message from Cletus Cassidy to me. He's rounding up everybody that's ever been bonded with a symbiote. And he's killing them, and he's taking the codices from them. Mm-hmm. We need to fucking leave. Like, we need to get a plan together, and we need to stop Carnage. Like, otherwise, we're all dead. <laughs> yeah, and uh, Peter Parker is a super genius, correct? Yeah, he's extremely yeah. intelligent. Yeah, yeah. But he got corrected by Eddie Brock about the plural word for codex. Yeah, he calls them codexes, and Brock says codices, and Parker's even like, oh, nice. Look at you. Yeah. Brock is supposed to be highly intelligent as well. Yeah, he's nowhere near close as Parker, but he's yeah, supposed he's to be very not, smart. He's not Peter Parker. Yeah, no, no, no. 
So after that news report, um, General Ross, yeah, they need to get help. So they even Parker, mentioned a significant other too. Don't forget about that. Who? Oh yeah, they mentioned Eddie Brock's. Um, he says Sharon or Karen. I can't remember. Yeah, the that name. she was there. Yeah, like, like oh my God, she's there. Yeah, her body's gonna be there. Assuming the mother of his child. Yeah, but, that's mm-hmm. who we assume that is. And I'm assuming that's supposed to be she in him, and that she's been fucking killed too, which mm-hmm. sucks. Mm-hmm. That's fucking blows. So they say that they need help and they need like a really like a highly intelligent mind. And the smartest person in all of Marvel is Reed Richards. Yep. And Parker even mentions that. He's like, Reed would be like perfect for this if we would have known months ago. <laughs> yeah, like, it's too There's late. just not enough time now. And he's like, so do you know anybody else? And Eddie Brock's like, I actually do. Mm-hmm. I know somebody I think can help us. So they go to the person that he thinks can help them, which is the maker, who is Reed Richards from an alternate universe. That's already been working on a motherfucking yeah, machine. for months. This is the first time that he came in contact with and met Venom. He started making this machine. And what this machine does will separate the codex from the host, and it won't harm the host. Because in order to remove it at current time, the it host has spine. to die. Yeah, it's yeah. your spine. You have to keep, yeah. Your spine's got to go. you got to be killed. But the maker has developed a machine that will remove it, supposedly, without killing the host. Now, the maker is a nefarious character. And the way he's drawn just lets you know already, I don't think this is a good guy. Mm-hmm. He looks pretty devious. He looks mm-hmm. like an alien from the movie Alien. I can see that. The way that, a little bit. Because he can elongate his face. There's yeah. that one panel where like his head is just barely coming to the side of the yeah, panel. It's like it elongated looks, it out. Yeah, it looks like, like a queen's alien. head. Yeah, yeah, it looks like the queen's head. So the maker is uh, not always a good character. He's not always a straight villain from my understanding, but he's not a hero. And him and Parker have like a little conversation that was kind of funny. He was like, "Hold up, who are you?" He's like, "Henry Richards from another universe." <laughs> he's like, "Yeah, we don't have time for this." And then Parker just interrupts him. He's like, asking him all these questions. He's like, "If you're even half as smart as my Reed Richards, we're in good hands." And the maker's just like, "Yes, I am Damn. at least half as smart as him." <laughs> and I was like, "Yeah, the maker's pretty fucking intelligent. He's still Reed Richards, mm-hmm. the smartest man in all of fucking Marvel." So they need to test this machine. And they have someone there, another kid, who is Parker's godson, Normie, who is Norman Osborn's grandson, who has been infected with carnage from Norman Osborn, because for a period of time, Norman Osborn was bonded with carnage and became the Red Goblin. Mm-hmm. But of course. And it totally made Norman Osborn psychotic as fuck, to the point now that he's been separated from the carnage symbiote, he thinks he actually is Cletus Cassidy. He doesn't know he's Norman Osborn. He thinks he's Cletus. Yeah, and they kept saying Norman. He's like, oh, you guys brought me dinner? No, dude, you're Norman. <laughs> no, it's you, you idiot. Yeah. Get with it. Get with it. You crazy fuck. The maker says that like they need to test the machine, so he wants to take extract some blood. He needs to take some blood first from Normie so that they can make sure that they can put him in the machine. And Parker's like, whoa, what the fuck? Whoa, whoa, Test subject. You're not, I'm not letting you use my godson as a test subject. So the maker's essentially like, well, then we need somebody expendable. Somebody, like, it doesn't matter if they die and this doesn't work. Maybe someone who's absolutely fucking crazy and has been bonded with a symbiote before. Does anyone ring a bell? And then we get this... smile. Yeah, we get this panel that's, like, devious smile. So why does he really want Norman Osborn? See, I was thinking he was still hinting at Eddie, but clearly it was Norman. Yeah, yeah. At first I thought it was Eddie, too, and then the very next page is like, oh, he's talking about fucking Norman Osborn. Mm -hmm. So then it goes to chapter three, which is The Long Red Dark, which is a fucking awesome name again. It's weird. Yeah, but it's... It's all right. It's carnage. Let's bum it down. (laughs) So now Venom and Spider-Man need to go to this prison to break out Norman Osborn. And all the pages leading up to showing what they're doing, it's like this singing voice and someone singing this song. And it's Norman thinking he's Cletus singing this deranged, demented song. I'm going to let you see the pain I went through or let you feel the pain. Yeah, it's all about how he wants to hurt Spider-Man. Yeah. He just wants to kill the spider. And uh, yeah, thanks for calling me right there. God, the worst. <laughs> and like we had mentioned earlier, Carnage is previously bonded with Norman to create the Red Goblin, which is a fucking dope-ass villain. Like, yeah, that's what the Green Goblin needs, just to be crazier. That's Why not? helpful. Yeah, no, yeah, give him, give him a symbiote. Why not? Yeah. That's all, all, all that Carnage needs. Let him fly and have pumpkin bombs. Yeah, Dude, he needs more. Let's go. <laughs> pumpkin bombs. So dumb. So the way that they were able to get into this prison is that John Jameson, if I am not incorrect on this, and someone correct me if I am, I'm 99% sure that I'm right. That is Jonah, J. Jonah Jameson's son. John Jameson. He's a okay. security guard there, and he helped Peter, uh, Parker 
uh, in there. And when he first sees him and he sees Venom, he's like, oh, God, behind you. Venom's coming to attack you. And Peter's like, no, calm down. He's with me. He's like, what? He's like, I'm, we're helping each other. And he's like, all right, man, if you say so. Hey, whatever. <laughs> you want to see me turn into a werewolf? Yeah, and he says that to Venom. And Venom's like, yeah, sure. Let's see how that works out. It's like he's, like, he's kind of talking shit. He's like, oh, you don't want to see my bad side. So turn into a werewolf. Oh, cool. <laughs> yeah. Dude, you're, you're like. Low, you're low tier. No I will one. literally bite your head off. Yeah, like it's nothing, dude. <laughs> you're a lowly little werewolf. In, in the in the pantheon of Marvel, a werewolf doesn't mean shit. No, you're barely better than a human. Yeah, like you ain't nothing. Get out of here, bitch. <laughs> little, little werewolf, bitch. So Jameson made it so that the prison was clear, like all like the guards and everybody else is gone. Like the prisoners are still there, obviously, but everyone's clear, so they don't see like Spidey and Venom there, mm-hmm. and that's also good because Venom is being framed right now by Carnage and that people think that he broke in and murdered a bunch of people. So he's wanted right now. Yeah. So it's good that there's nobody there because they'd probably be trying to arrest and kill fucking Venom. Of course. Of course. (laughs) So then while they're having this conversation, Spider-Man, his Peter tingle goes off. And he starts, uh, <laughs> yeah, that's Peter that one. Okay, okay, we got his it. Spidey sense, a.k.a. slash the Peter Tingle, goes it's off. Like, and well, yeah, Norman Reedus is in the other yeah, room. Yeah, no. he, Norman Reedus? Yeah, Norman Reedus, you know, from, uh, <laughs> from Walking, Walking Dead. Dead. Yeah. That would have been hilarious if he said that. And you just see a jail cell, <laughs> and he's just sitting there with his arms hanging out like, what's up, guys? What's up, guys? Been here for a while. <laughs> Daryl here. <laughs> you got a crossbow. How did he get that in here? Norman Osborn, whatever. Yeah, right, no. your real names, uh. Venom tells him, he's like, well, yeah, of course it's going on. Fucking Norman's right there. And Spider-Man's like, that's not how it works. It's with immediate danger. And he's locked behind the door. He can't hurt us right now. He's like, something else is going on. And then we see fucking John, J- or James or John? John Jameson start going fucking crazy. His eyes turn red. Yeah. He's like, I have to get him out. I have to get him out. And he starts, like, trying to shoot his gun at the fucking door. And he's like, God. He's, he's here. Like, he's like, well, God dude. is here. God is coming. So it's very apparent now that he has been infected with carnage. So that's not good for them. And then the PA system starts going fucking crazy, blaring this song, which now fucks Venom up. And it's like not incapacitating him, but it's like freaking Venom out. So we can't do anything. Yeah, he's, he's like grabbing his head and just freaking out like, make the music stop. Make it stop. Like the sound is like and fucking And Eddie up. has to do it himself. He grabs the yeah. gun and shoots the mm-hmm. noise. Yeah. yeah, it shoots the speaker so that he can finally like be okay. And then we see Cletus Cassidy just walking through the empty, unguarded prison Peeling pieces of the symbiote off him and just tossing into the jail cells. Singing his little song. Yeah, singing a song. Singing the same thing uh, that uh, Norman, Norman was singing. Was yeah, when I first read that, kind of confused me. I was like, wait, when did Norman get out? But I was like, oh no, that's Cletus Cassidy. Yeah, obviously. He's infected. Yeah. yeah. So he is creating more, uh, I guess, kids now. Just yeah. little droppings of himself, infecting other people with little droppings to make. Out. What is this on me? What is this bug? Yeah, and they're all like freaking like, get this off me, get this off me. So he's like making a little uh, demented army right now. As he's on the way in the prison to where Peter and Venom are. Mm-hmm. So then nice they, little fight scene ensues. Yeah, they have a nice fight scene with a bunch of the carnages coming to attack them. Mm-hmm. And they're all fighting and shit. And then we get some like inner monologue from Eddie, which was really cool. Where he's talking about how like he forgot what this felt like. Mm-hmm. And he's always like kind of wondered why he even wants or liked like Venom. Like yeah, he doesn't like, what is it. this parasite? He's like, like, what does it just feed yeah, off of me? Exactly. He's like, it doesn't help me. But then I realize it does. Because it makes me this, and I enjoy this. <laughs> and you yeah. seem like fucking fighting it was, carnage. He, it lets me feel pain. Yeah, it lets me feel pain. Yeah. That's what it was, and I need pain. Mm-hmm. And he's fighting all the fucking carnages. Carnage himself shows up, and fucking Spider-Man tries to attack him. He's like, yeah. That does not work. Carnage just rips him up by his fucking neck and throws him through Norman Osborn's door. Yeah. And then Peter's all beaten the fuck up and bloody, like the bottom of his mask is ripped off. And when he rolls in there, fucking Norman's got a shiv, and he's trying to shank Spider-Man. He's like, we're here to help you, you crazy shit. Stop. <laughs> and then Venom keeps yelling at Norman, too. He's like, yo, we're trying to help you, Norman. Yeah, and that's when he tries to block the door. Yeah, and they try to, to block the door to stop the carnages from coming in as, like, they're trying to figure out how the fuck to get out of here. And they're like, how are we going to get out? And Peter Parker's like, we, we need, like, we don't have time, blah, blah, blah. And then Venom's like, don't be smart. Don't be clever. Be strong. He was like, fuck. So like wraps his hands up and starts punching through the cement wall to try mm-hmm. to get them an escape. Yep. And then Carnage gets fed up with this. He's like, all right, I'm done with all this. And just blows the door blows off the, the door engine. down like it was nothing. <laughs> yeah. And then all the Carnages come in and he comes in and he takes fucking uh, Norman mm-hmm. Osborn. And Parker's like, don't kill him. Don't kill him. No. And Carnage is like, kill him. And he just laughs at him. He's like, you don't get it, do you? I'm not here to kill anybody. I'm here to make friends. And then the symbiote infects fucking Norman Osborn again and turns him into another carnage. And it says, to be continued. Yeah, and it's just a, what we would see, like, eight carnages in the room. Mm-hmm. So now he's got a whole fucking army of carnages. 
And he's going around trying to wipe out everybody that's ever been bonded to take the codices from them to try to resurrect Null and to have an army of carnages when he does it. Well, not resurrect, to awaken Null. To awaken Null. So my question is, is he wanting to awaken Null to, like, is he going to try to kill him and be the new god? Or does he think that he's worthy of standing beside Null now because he is also a god? My guess is that, but it's Cletus, so I don't yeah, know. Yeah, exactly. Cletus is fucking nuts. Yeah, Carnage even is- Noel will probably be like, you're too crazy. Like, yeah, <laughs> he'll be like, back up. Yeah. <laughs> you woke me up for this shit? You're nuts. Yeah, you're crazy. I don't Put need Actually, this. get my necro sword. <laughs> yeah, I don't Where's care. Where's my god slayer at? I don't care how powerful Carnage is now. He's not shit compared to the sword. No, no, no. Cut him the fucking half. He's nothing to know. No can I mean, literally true. control your symbiote at any fucking point. Yeah, true. Like, you, what do you fight that? You can't fight well, that. You can't fight what, it with a symbiote. Now with that, yeah, it ain't happening. <laughs> Jeez. That is not possible. I mean, the only way you're fighting is if you're a silver surfer. Mm, got him. Mm. Which also, uh, that video that I watched about the symbiotes today also showed that silver surfer was infected or bonded with the symbiote for like a very short period of time and he like thrust it off himself. Yeah, we read that comic. It was in Silver Surfer Black. Yeah, but this the panel they showed wasn't from Silver Surfer Black, no. I don't think. It was like something well, else. Something they brought previous. It back yeah. But yeah, and I yeah, and I totally even forgot about that. Like when I saw the video, I was like, Oh, I didn't know that. And then I totally just escaped me. Like, like, they literally put that, that happened issue to too. Yeah. yeah. Another thing, but it could be wrong. That video may have actually been referencing that, but the panel didn't look familiar. Yeah. Well, I, it's, I was about to say, in that that panel was just was it him standing next to Noel? Was it Noel in a black? No, it, black? Was, it was a very small panel. Like they condensed the panel to just so surfer. Oh, okay. So I couldn't see everything else. Yeah. So, so, yeah, very hard to tell. But he, honestly, another thing, but he it probably was talking shit. about that. Yeah. Yeah, he did look dope. And he even said we. Did he? Yeah. yeah. Like, and yeah, that, he says he that like, then. we are to help yeah. or something. Like, we need to extinguish the light. Like, he says it's a null. Like, yeah. Silver Surfer spoke like Venom. Well, of course. For a moment. Yeah. That was cool. Well, I'm I guess glad like that they've been doing Venom, too. The other and all that stuff. It's nice. The what? The other. I like what they're doing with Venom having the whole. I mean, it's always been two people, but I right, think yeah. they're doing mm-hmm. a much better job with it now. Oh, yeah, yeah. I like how it is. I love that shit, yeah. Because I've never been that intrigued with Venom. I mean, I like the idea, you know. That's all that's cool. I like the carnage and stuff like that. The ideas of the symbiotes are dope, mm-hmm. you know what I mean? But it, it's definitely getting really good. I like this stuff. It's just never been something that you've really delved into nope, too much. Yeah. Not really. Yeah, it's a cool little universe. Like, mm-hmm. I like it. Uh, carnage is fucking nuts. Especially with the introduction of Noel. That's awesome. <laughs> Noel's badass. We actually got it like an origin, like, boom, there's a god. He created this. He is this. Like, yeah. He is that. He was like the first sentient life in this he universe. He created his sword, dude. It was crazy. He's the. Oh, man. It's nuts. <laughs> like they screamed. They they fear the fire that he used, the God fire. Well, yeah, because fire is when he used the ham, the thing. That's why they're still. They're, that's why they're afraid of it now, just because of the yeah, exactly. creation they're of all the sword. Afraid of fire, right? Yeah, just even the creation carnage? of all black everything. Like, uh, yeah, I would assume the carnage would be too. If it's connected to that, it was like yeah. they still fear that. Oh yeah, he's not it's part of the hive the, right now. So when they reconnect to the hive, he probably be scared of fire again. Probably he probably isn't right now. That, connecting to the hive makes him stronger. Yeah, mm-hmm. that's why Venom's so dope now. It's also why Venom, like, that's how he, only the way he was able to like get good as well mm-hmm. is that he was get good he was disconnected from the hive and then got cleansed mm-hmm. so if he's reconnected to the hive it will go back to being a little more evil because Noel himself is just bad but <laughs> like they all, it's not a good they thing they were separated that's the thing Noel's trying to get his babies back yeah. he's like oh they've been gone for too long they've and been just, with you he's tried to help mm-hmm. he's trying to make it happen that doesn't help no that, no because fucking of all people that's trying to help Noel it's Carnage why because <laughs> yeah. when I's evil because this is easy to combat <laughs> Carnage is a god now and Noel yeah. <laughs> that'll be easy well you're trying to rope me in here <laughs> But overall, for this issue, man, I'm really intrigued. Super excited to see where it goes. Donny Cates just once again proving that, hey, like, I am fucking comics. Like, this dude writes the most intricate, amazing stories. And then the afterward, when this comic was over, um, there's, like, an afterward where they're talking about, like, the process of making it. They're planning, it took them a year to map out the story for this. For Absolute Carnage? Yep. That's and they originally planned it just to be a little mini. And as they were talking about it and mapping it out, not even that, they'd already mapped it out. And when they went to present it to, like, I guess the higher-ups at Marvel... As they were presenting it to him and they were all talking about it, they were like, oh, man, this is more than a five-issue mini. Like, this is going to be all-encompassing of all of, like, the Spider-Man universe and all of, like, the Venomverse. Like, it's got to be everything. Which, when I read that after, that, like, led me to believe, fuck, all these are going to be necessary if it's that important. Probably. But I don't think Donnie is writing everything. Pretty sure he's just writing Absolute Carnage main series. Yeah. But it was very good. The art was really good for this, too. I love the way Carnage looks now. He looks so fucking deranged. Like, he always has. But now it's like, even taller and, like, a really small spine in the middle of him. I was say, yeah, they look separated. It's not even a person at this point. Yeah, it looks fucking crazy, dude. Mm-hmm. I love that shit. I like it. The design for Venom's face is, like, odd in this one. I wasn't I ready it. for that. It's more uh, it's cool. Spider-Man. Yeah. yeah, I like it. It's cool. I just wasn't ready for it. I was like, oh, shit, this is different. Because I don't even care. I don't really care for the open face Long tongue thing. Like, the here's a long end of shit. Yeah, that's, that definitely signifies the more vin- like villainous Venom. Yep. Yeah. This reminds me more of like Agent Venom, which that. is pretty cool, which was Flash Thompson, by the way, for people that don't know that. He signed up for the military and went to uh, the war in Iraq and lost both of his legs 
and then Venom bonded with him, and they used to send him on missions, and he would only be bonded for 48 hours so that it wouldn't like fully take him over. But then they, I can't remember what it was, they figured out some way to where that they could be bonded and he could still be himself. So then he became a Venom and became uh, Agent Venom and was like a cosmic being. He was like a cosmic space patrol person. That's cool. And, uh, Venom Space Agent or Space Venom. It was the name of the comic series that it's in. And it's Dr. Flash Thompson is Agent Venom. Why not? Pretty dope. Yeah. Why not? Yeah. Why not? Yeah. And Agent Venom is like bigger too. He's like big and bulky. Like old school Venom used to look, but he wears like military gear and shit. Mm-hmm. He looked dope as fuck. That's cool. Venom Space Knight. And he was part of Guardians for a while. When he was part of Guardians, the Venom symbiote bonded with like Rocket, Groot, and Drax. Nice. Yeah. So I wonder if they'll be brought into this since Donny Cates also writes Guardians. And I mean, there's have, so many people that they've they connected. They would have codices. Yeah. I mean, there'd be so many people connected with this. There's so a lot. I don't know. Fuck yeah. Man. No. Yeah. They showed Logan out there. Yeah. The cover for this has <laughs> is Carnage standing on top of Graves, and it's Logan, Eddie Brock, Peter Parker, and then the other one's cut off, but it says, like, Verse, so it looks like it'd be Danvers. If Carnage kills Wolverine, Captain Marvel, Venom, and Spider-Man, I don't know that people are stopping him. That's fucking crazy. That's quite a death toll. Yeah. Well, we just need Silver Surfer to come back. No, I mean, yeah, that's kind of we'll broken. find out in three. Kind of broken. He didn't defeat Noel, but he was able to escape Noel. Well, he's the only one that actually that did got damage away. to him. Yeah, he's yeah. the only one. Well, yeah, true, true. He like he's the what stopped him from growing. He put him in his sleep. Like, mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Because they have in the uh, Venom where they talk about Noel's like fault, like Thor's, you know, put him in his place a couple times too. Mm-hmm. Like he was like, you know, they were uh, back in, uh, they were praying to uh, Beowulf. They were like, Beowulf, help us! And Thor's like, I don't know who this Beowulf man is, but I will help you because they were unleashing Noel. They were opening up a thing, uh, like a doorway that caused Noel to come out. And of course, Thor came, Thor came down and was like, Nope, lightning. <laughs> <laughs> and he's like, I've never felt that, and he ran. He's like, I'm out. Oh, really? <laughs> yeah, he didn't oh, kill him, but he put him in his place, yeah. Oh, shit. Because he fell when he had a... Uh, they didn't showcase... I thought it was... I guess it's a throwaway thing, but one of the uh, people he was fighting, he had a sword battle with one-on-one with uh, what I thought was... Noel did? Yeah, what I thought was, was uh, Thor at the time, but I guess it was just a throwaway Asgardian guy. I don't oh, know. okay. But he also put him in his place a little bit. Was they it, had a one-on-one shoddy stuff. I don't know. I don't think so. They didn't give a name. Oh, That's they didn't I, say? I thought it was Thor. Okay. Maybe it was a previous Thor? Maybe. And like a previous Ragnarok cycle? I mean, he's been around since before everything. Yeah. So. <laughs> yeah, Noah's probably fought a lot of people. <laughs> yeah. yeah. We got a lot of history to make up for. Oh, yeah, for sure. I'm, I'm excited with how, uh, with where this is going to go. I've always liked Carnage. I've always been like intrigued because he's just pure psychotic. Yeah. He's just pure insanity. Pure Carnage. Yeah. yeah. The name is he's perfect. Just Carnage. Yeah, the, per- <laughs> yeah. the name is perfect. Legitimately, it's a perfect name for him. Yeah, I'm excited to see where it goes moving forward. It's a Donny Cates book. It's so. the weakest Donny Cates I've read. But I mean, we're only three. We're only well, one, one issue in. Yeah, for so. sure. It it so far the week is Donny Cates. Like Guardians is exceptional. Silver Surfer against all odds is making me love Silver Surfer, mm-hmm. a character I just didn't really care about previously. Mm-hmm. And then what else? Though? Venom's really good so far. Venom's the other Donny Cates book. I was like, there's something else he's writing. Is that yeah? Oh man, yeah. I'm excited moving forward. So speaking of Donny Cates, <laughs> we also read Guardians of the Galaxy Why not? Seven. <laughs> and this was a. Uh, I don't know, man. It felt like a smaller issue, but a lot of sh- important shit happened. Uh, like for me, anyway. I guess a smaller following six. I mean, <laughs> I mean well, yeah, it was pretty epic. <laughs> it was the closing of that story. Everything small for that guy. Yeah, when Thanos dies, and everything afterwards is kind of small. I mean, I don't know. I mean, yeah, if you read the annual into this, uh, some things make sense, except Lockjaw. He does, still doesn't make sense. He, <laughs> came out, he came out of nowhere. He's literally just there as a plot device, yeah. just to get them places. Hey, we can teleport anywhere. Yeah. Cool. <laughs> If I guess Beta Ray can't use the Bifrost, so they got to use Lockjaw. Yep. Yeah. And he wasn't even in this that much. Like, I don't even... Lockjaw is in like... No, pa- Beta. I don't even see Oh, Beta? Him. He's in like two panels. He's like when the team is getting ready to leave, like yep. Peter's like, all y'all with me, and they leave, and then when they're like... When they are getting captured, and then when they're infected. They see him like three times. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Like, I don't even think he speaks the whole... I was going to say, I don't think he had a bubble. Not yeah. a lot of them talked other than a little bit of Gamora, mainly Peter, mm-hmm. some, some Groot. Groot. Yep. And then like other characters. And Dragon are, a little bit. That aren't in the Guardians. Yeah. So when this starts off, we see the Universal Church of Truth. And it's this huge, massive, planet-sized spaceship that they, like, inhabit. And the Nova Corps have it, like, surrounded. And mm-hmm. they're like, this isn't supposed to be here. This, dro- this dropped out of, like, hyperspace. What is this doing here? And they're, um, the different Nova Corps members are, co- are talking with, like, um, Nova Corps, like, command and, like, their uh, communicators. And they're like... Um, this is the Universal Church of Truth, which is something we know, but this isn't something we've ever seen before. This is different than 
the previous version of this that we've seen. What is this thing? So as they're out there, it starts like lighting up. <laughs> and I like that the command is like, we're sensing a massive like burst of energy. And Nobukor is like, yeah, we definitely see it. <laughs> <laughs> it's a huge cross looking like freaking uh, Dr. Fate. It's like an onk looking cross it's, like right in front of them on the ship. And it's like glowing. And they're like, oh, my God, this, is, this has got to be a weapon. And then these people come out of it. And it's the leader, I'm guessing, of the church, Universal Church of Truth. We don't know who he is yet. The Patriarch. The Patriarch is what he calls himself, yeah. And he's got like two guards with him, and he pretty much tells the Novacore, hey, we're not here to hurt you. We're not here to cause trouble. You can leave. Just don't worry about us. And the Novacore's like, yeah, we, we definitely can't do that. And we're going to have to shut this down. <laughs> yeah, Why don't you go ahead and do that? And that's when it kicked on. Yeah, he's like, okay, right, turn yeah. on the engine. Mm -hmm. And then, boom, huge cross lights up, and he's like, have faith. Yeah, and he turns which, around to like uh, leave. Which, reading this and then reading Absolute Carnage, they're kind of doing the same thing with the whole like, have faith, God is yeah. here. I can see like that. Like, it's the corruption. Like, there's, like, hive minds. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. yeah the, the Two hive minds <laughs> going on right now. The Universal Church of Truth definitely seems like it's a big hive mind. Yeah. Oh, yeah. For yeah. sure. So then these, like, weird-looking purple tentacle things, like, pick everybody up, and they start uh, converting them into whatever this hive mind is. And you hear Mission Command is, like, telling one of the Nova Corps, like, do not take off your helmet. You will die in space. And its eyes are all purple, and it's like, have faith, and takes its helmet off. And they all fucking die. Mm-hmm. And then we go to the next panel, and we get to see that... Well, not necessarily die, but they got infected. We well, yeah, got infected, so it kind of leads us like, well, okay, so they're all infected. They're, yeah, they're good. You know, like, what's happening? They were taken. And then the next page is Star-Lord and fucking Gamora laying in bed together. Mm. And they have this little conversation where essentially Gamora says, like, we both died a couple times. Why wait for love? So now they're, like, back together again. Like, wow, after I uh, didn't expect this to happen after I said I love you. Yeah, like, and well, then he tried to kill me afterwards. <laughs> well, I like you. So I like this pairing for Gamora. I like her with Peter Quill infinitely more than I like her with uh, Richard Ryder Nova, because I just don't like that character. But for Peter Quill, I don't like it as much as I like him with Kitty Pryde. It's Where's Nova at now? He got taken away by... When did we last see him? What was he doing? He was coming to warn them, and then he was there when Gamora, when Peter took the bullet, and that's the last we saw from him. Yeah, and then we saw him in the annual, and I don't think we've seen him since. He was like, oh, he had the scene in the annual. Yeah, that's true. Yeah. yeah that's he's true. with that story with Quasar in the annual. Yep. Telling yeah. some story. Okay, so I don't so know what he's, he's doing now. Whatever. Yeah, he's off the doing The last of now. the Nova Corps. Yeah. <laughs> he is now. Yep. So they're in bed together, whatever, so they're together again. And I, it's mostly just familiarity for me about with Kitty and, and Star Lord. Like, that's what I'm used to, so that's why I like seeing. But I do like the pairing of Gamora and Star Lord. Like, it makes sense. They're always running each other on the same ship. Like, relationships are going to happen in form, and that's a pretty cool one. And it keeps with the MCU, which is cool, because I, like, I like them together on that. Not unless you're the 100. Bell and Clark, baby. <laughs> oh, my God. Fuck all that shit. Been together since day one. Never one romantic interest. Yeah, not thank, once. Yeah, thank God. No, I love it. Not good. I know you hate it, but I love it. It'd be amazing. The chemistry's off the charts. Uh, yeah, well, I mean, they're especially married, considering they're, they're married, married in real life, life now. I'm, so. saying, I'm just saying. It'd be a good relationship. <laughs> That's all I'm saying. That's all I'm saying. I'm only for it if the writing is on oh, point. Oh, and Clark next season. That's what's going to happen. Because they could ruin it. Oh, don't. No. Why? I mean, it's like a dream for you, man. Yeah, it would be awesome, but like, it's, it'd be—I don't know—it almost feel like pandering because there's been no indication that Octavia is anything but heterosexual. She's never shown interest in a female ever. She's only yeah, ever been with men. It's a very good point. And it would just seem like pandering, like, "Oh, hey, look, we're inclusive. She is also bisexual, along with Clark." It's like, really? Because you unveiled that about Clark pretty fucking early into the show. Mm -hmm. <laughs> we're seven years in well, now. She's, only, never she's been it. with two and two, so that split's gonna happen next season. Of, like, being with somebody else? Two men, two women. Yeah. That's all she's doing. Uh, it'll be an alien now, so it's always going to stay separated. <laughs> <laughs> they're not aliens. They're humans. They're no, clearly they're the gonna anomaly. New characters they're going to aliens. They're straight up just, one's gonna we're be her sorry. Lover. Okay. <laughs> no, they're going to be alien. Like, it's going to be the hive queen alien. And oh, my Clark God. Is relationship. So, anyways, if you all have no horse, idea what Jesus. the fuck we're talking about, we're talking about the show The 100, and everybody should watch it. The yep. best show on TV. 100%. It's had six seasons. It's seventh season. It's its last. It'll be next year. Its last episode will be episode 16 of that season, which will be the 100th episode. So the 100th will have 100 episodes. And tomorrow, no, uh, Wednesday, uh, the sixth season will be on Netflix, uh, the 14th, August 14th. Yep, because it's a CW show, and Netflix and CW have that partnership where, like, two weeks after the, the season is over, it's Netflix, mm -hmm. which is awesome. It's great for me for, it's like— not even two weeks, ten days. Like, uh, ten days. Mm -hmm. It was great for me for Supergirl. When I fell off halfway through the season, I just got distracted. So I was like, I'll just wait till the season's over and wait a week and then binge it, which is what I did. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, this is easy. <laughs> it's going to help uh, anybody that wanna, wants to watch The 100. You can start it now, and by the time you're up to where season six would be, hey, it'll be there. Yep. <laughs> you're ready to go. And everyone should check it out. The show's amazing. 100%. We've got an audience member in here right now. What's up, Emily? My dog is coming to check out the room. 
What's good, girl? She's just staring me in the eyes. <laughs> she's literally like just staring like, you like, down. Like, like what you doing in my room? room? Okay, she stopped looking. We're right, good. She's oh, she walked away. <laughs> <laughs> I got real nervous. <laughs> I got real nervous. <laughs> That's the just third now. time she's done that, man. I don't know. I, <laughs> she keeps staring me down. I think I should leave. Some something's going on. <laughs> so yeah, we've got Peter Quill and Gamora back together, and there's a knock on the door, and it's, it's Groot. And he's like, Peter, I need to talk to you. And Peter's like, Oh, not now. Uh, give me a minute. And he's like, Look, I know Gamora's in there. You're not slick. Everybody knows. Groot was like, They, they fucking. <laughs> he's like, We know you. We know you're fucking. We know. It. We know it. They fucking. So then he's like, We got a, a message came in, and the message is from Peter's father, just son or Jason. And it's telling him that he has been sent out to this area in space where the Nova Corps found something and it killed the Nova Corps entirely. They all gone. of them. They gone. They're all dead. I guess except for Richard Ryder Nova. He's Butch the only one. So they're all dead. And he's essentially, he's just trying to apologize for Peter for how that he's not been around in his life. He hasn't been a good dad. Mm-hmm. And then something out there happens, assuming... I'm assuming the thing powers up again. Why He's are like, both of these dealing with like bad dads, man? Right? Yeah. What is this? What is, what is this, Donny Cates? Like, is he telling us dad, something, bro? Your dad wasn't there for you, man? We love like you, bro. Dad. We love you, fam. It's like, we, we, we like you. <laughs> Come on, Donny. It's okay, big it's guy. It's okay, man. <laughs> Getting heartfelt out here, man. Let's watch Toy Story with him, bro. You got a friend in me. <laughs> That's all I'm saying, man. Jeez. So then he warns Peter, don't come out here. Like, something is very fucking wrong. Do not come. And then... The com- transmission cuts. Oh, no, have faith. Yeah, and he's like, oh, yeah, and the transmission starts to cut out, and he's like, have faith. And, like, and he says that in the little thing, and it's like, oh, fuck. So we're led to believe that Peter's father just died, mm-hmm. which, of course, Peter's not going to take well, and he just told him, don't come. So what does he do? Of course, Peter's he like, goes. we're going. <laughs> and I love the um, dialogue throughout this, which you don't realize till the end. It's fucking Moon Dragon talking this whole time. That's what it was. Yeah, it was huh? Moon Dragon. And she's saying that, like, no one questioned it. We all just went anyways. Because we knew it was like a dire situation, and he would have done it for any one of us. Because I thought it was Star Lord at first, and then when it said he would have done it for any of us, it's like, okay, who the well, fuck I thought is it was this? Like Groot. Yeah. yeah, and I thought it may have been Groot too, but at the end, they're like, it's a Moon Dragon because they, they speak in the first person, and it's over Moon Dragon. Mm-hmm. And because it plus it said now, and then yeah. it goes to Moon Dragon. That's through. true. Yep. yep. So then uh, they finally get to where they're going, where the Universal Truth is, Universal Church of Truth. They see the big spaceship. And Star Lord's like, all right, Moon Dragon, you stay here. Give us all the psychic links so we can talk to each other. So. She becomes Martian Manhunter for a moment. Mm-hmm. And then he makes Groot stay there in case they, anything goes wrong. Groot can pilot the ship to get them the fuck out of there. And then he takes everyone else, which would be Gamora, Philovel, Beta Ray Bill, and Lockjaw with him. And they teleport onto the Universal Church of Truth. And when they get there, they're immediately in like the center of the ship where the, um, what was he called? The Patriarch. The Patriarch. That's kind of when he revealed himself. Yeah, he w- just said, he's like, who are you? He's like, I'm the Patriarch. That's right. He's like, who are you? I'm the Patriarch. And he's like, uh, been waiting for you. I'm like, oh, fuck. <laughs> uh, this probably is not going to turn out well. Yeah. So then Moon Dragon starts talking to their, like, psych- like their silence. She's like, you need to get the fuck out of there right now. Something is going wrong. Like, this, like, I have a bad feeling. About I have this a guy. really bad feeling. Like, th- this shit's wrong. You need to get the fuck out of there. And then all of a sudden, they all get, like, whipped up by those purple things again. And they start getting, like, turned mm-hmm. into whatever, like, Like, they're experiencing does. every fucking memory. Just pain, mm-hmm. looking for some sort of escape. Like, screaming. Uh, Phyla Bell is just screaming, yelling for Moon Dragon. Uh, it's pretty dark. Yeah, it was pretty fucked up. <laughs> Groot's not infected. I don't know why that. Because he's on the spaceship. And the only reason... No, he was holding them all. Remember, he was, like, touching their bodies. No, Groot was, was on confused. the spaceship. Yeah, Those little how? tentacle things were the things that infect you. No, I know, but when mm-hmm. he when they showed all the people, like, turning, Groot was there holding the people. Unless he was just holding Phyla, uh, Moon Dragon. I think he's thing. just holding Moon Dragon, because yeah. him and Moon Dragon were back on the ship. Because he's connected, so she's, like, I guess, hearing the psycho... Uh, yeah, like, she would like be that. infected because of the Psylink, but then uh, why isn't Groot also getting infected? He's also Psylink with them. Because they're all Psylink together. It's Groot. So that was okay. weird that Groot's I, not getting affected. I'm assuming it's a different life. Uh, yeah, I was different gonna say, maybe it's because of what he is. It doesn't work on him. Possibly. Yeah. And maybe it won't work on Rocket either. And who knows? I don't know. Yeah, I'm not sure. So, uh, they're all getting affected, then it lets them go. It doesn't fully infect him, it seems. And Star Lord like, drops to the ground and he's like, what the fuck just Yeah, happened? I don't want to experience that again. <laughs> he's like, this was awful. And then, we see the patriarch take his like hood off because he's hooded. You can't see his face. You just see these purple eyes. And it's just son. Fucking Star-Lord's father. Boom. And this is the Universal Church of Truth from the future. They've come back to here for whatever reason. And that's like, he's here for Peter for some reason. Yeah, for some reason. We and don't in, know and why. And in the annual, he was capturing a bunch of other people, too. Yep. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's right. And the, Cosmos the, with the him. annual. Yeah, and Cosmos with him yep. for whatever reason. Yep. I assume he'll be in the issue eight. That would be dope. I love the way Cosmos speaks. 
No, I guess he's in Russian. Explain. He's Russian. Yeah, it's just funny. It's a, it's a Russian dog, so it's like how you'd imagine Thanks, Dodge. Thanks, comrade. It's how you'd imagine like the Dodge speak, like yeah. the D-O-G-E Dodge, but it's in Russian. Okay. <laughs> and then, yeah, so everybody is uh, infected now. We see every... Philovel, Moon, uh, not Moon, Philovel, uh, Gamora, Ray. Beta Ray, and Lockjaw are all infected, or whatever it is. They're all eyes are purple, and they're like, have faith. Have faith. But Star Lord is not. He's the only one that they didn't like convert or whatever. And now we know that his dad is the patriarch, the leader. Yep. So what the fuck is going on? Are we in like. And he's like, why are you doing this? He's like, well, I wanted my son to be here yeah. when he saw this. Is this so some weird this? time loop? Because his dad sent him a message, and then they got like attacked. Well, by he said he truth. sent the message. He said, "I knew you'd come." Yeah, I knew you'd come. And send- oh, so I guess he it sent was it fake. to him. To it fake. was fake. Yeah. yeah, I didn't catch that at all. Yeah. Okay, that makes more sense now. He was like, "Oh, I knew you were going to catch that." It was yeah. obvious. Like you, yeah. were, you couldn't help. But uh, <laughs> you're Peter Quill. Yeah, that makes sense now. Yeah, so his yeah. fucking dad just sent him the message. Yeah, I was thinking like. So he was still way in, like that's why he had the eyes anyways. He just was able to make himself look like. Yeah, true. Oh no, we're crashing. I was thinking way, way differently than what they're doing. Like it's just some weird time loop. Is that the, mo- the, the moment in time that he got with the <laughs> yeah, that's got real like, compli- what is happening? It got real complicated. <laughs> yeah, I went way back to the future on this shit. Uh, but yeah, no, that was he sent it knowing that why he would want him. And it's like, but why? What is exactly why? Yeah. And then we get to, uh, I believe, the cut of mm-hmm. Moon Dragon. Now we get the realization, oh, it's her talking like this. Yep. Oh, okay, that was all the past. Now we're in the present, and it's Groot, and he's like, uh, she mentions, like, how is he going to help us? Mm-hmm. And you're like, what? Yeah, he who. Yeah, he who. Next panel, then it shows Groot, like, kind of looking away, squinting, and Moon Dragon just jaw drops. Like, she's crying. She's explaining, like, I felt every, it's so much on me mm-hmm. to hear my wife scream my fucking name like to just yell out like i'm dying you know what i mean like it's it's yeah, you have nothing you can't do anything yeah uh and then of course we get this real we finally get it we see rocket and he does not look good, good <laughs> no guy. he's carrying an iv bag like <laughs> oh man he's fucked up i mean super skinny i mean he's already he's raccoon yeah. he's already small but he is like bad yeah, man. Like super malnourished yes yeah and he even says like I got nothing to lose. <laughs> yeah. He's like, oh, and shit. He's, barely, he's dude, like, I mean, wrapped on around his knees, ankles. He's mm-hmm. just deathbed. Like, I don't know how he's standing. That's nope. how bad he looks. Like, it looks bad. No, he definitely doesn't have cankles. Uh, he looks like he needs a symbiote right now. Uh, <laughs> yeah, so he needs some help. <laughs> give this dude. I would wa- I would totally read a symbiote infected raccoon. Dude, series, Rock- like him and Rocket. Oh, my God. Venom raccoon. Rock- yeah. Yes, dude. <laughs> Rocket Venom. Dude, that would be so dope. That would be dope. That's all that that little crazy fucker needs. Yeah. It's <laughs> a symbiote. <laughs> Why not? Let him get it. Let him get it. Oh, my God. He'd be stealing everything. But overall impressions, man, I mean, I was impressed. Obviously, I've been a big fan of this series all mm. the way through. Uh, I like the story that they've closed up and now breaking off to. Clearly don't know what the hell is going on. I'm not too familiar with the uh, Church of Truth. I'm not you know, Apparently they are very powerful with the mind warping. Mm-hmm. They are a very powerful hive mind. Mm-hmm. Uh, I'm excited to see where this goes. What is Donna Kate's going to prevent to us? Uh, and I did notice, and it was funny because I was like, why does this art look so weird now? It doesn't look <laughs> that good. Like I've never been, uh, and then if you can go to previous uh, talks about this, I've never been crazy about Jeff Shaw's drawings of certain faces. Mm-hmm. Uh, and you know you can go back and look yeah. at our other videos I've said that you know I'm not too crazy I like the colorist that's fine but the artist's not been too great uh, and now they switched for this one and it was, it was I was like oh I miss Jeff Shaw <laughs> <laughs> see I, I like they had that face did you not see it when they did though like as soon as they were announcing like hey we're gonna go when uh, Peter Quill was like hey let's go find my dad mm-hmm. and they showed everybody there like Moon Dragon's face was all fucking distorted and file red. They all they all looked weird. No, I don't know why. Didn't notice. Yeah. Just look at that panel. It looked weird. Well, I'm sure I noticed. I just don't remember. Mm-hmm. But uh, yeah, I always liked Jeff Shaw. I thought he was like a really good artist. But I did. And it wasn't bad. I did I have just... issues with sometimes how he drew faces. Yeah. He drew he drew Gamora really fucking weird a couple times. There was a couple times. Yeah, I'm like, like, oh, what is that fuck? What is that yeah. face? But was, and overall, I think in, like I like Peter his looked art the style. weirdest in this one, man. He looked the most different. It was just weird. Who the fuck is the guy that's drawing Silver Surfer right now? Oh shit! I don't remember his name. Fuck. That dude is. Woo! Oh my well, god. Well, the colorist has a lot to do with that. The color's too. amazing too, yeah. but the art is fucking incredible. Yeah. If you read the director's Very. cut, it shows all the pencil. It's like, how the fuck does he know what he's doing? <laughs> it's you just do what you got to do. Oh my god, dude, he's so good too. Pencilist. But yeah, I like Joe Shaw. I think he's a really good artist. I just have a problem with the way he draws faces at times, especially in the Guardian series. It was kind of yeah. like awkward. Mm-hmm. And then new artists they have right now, yeah, it was kind of awkward with faces yeah, a little and it bit sh- too. It I showed. Guess. I was like, man, they got a new artist, and looked at it, and I was like, oh yeah, they did. I wasn't wrong. Like, I was thinking, can, I was like, man, oh yeah, from the jump you can tell, oh, it's a different artist. This is yeah. not Jeff Shaw. One hundred percent. Yeah, no. I, I I still thought the art was good. It wasn't like noticeably terrible. Not but enough. It, yeah, definitely. It also, it also wasn't to where I was like, oh, this is amazing. Yeah, yeah, and, and it helps the story still compelling. Exa- oh yeah, the story is still great. Yeah, good yeah. team. Good. I mean. It's awesome. Guardians, man. I thought the art was really incredible on the one of the b- first opening panels of the Nova Corps in space, and it showed the whole oh, church. Yeah. That was so cool. Yeah, no, that was amazing. That was really that was good, good looking. 
Yeah, it seems like uh, it's just people really that pops out. And Jeff Shaw, I mm-hmm. feel like had that the the ships itself are good, the mm-hmm. powers are good, the fight scenes are pretty good. You don't have to focus on the face as much. Yeah, uh, it's just I don't know the drawing of the people that changed so much. Gr- Groot still looked pre- relatively the same. His right. his mohawk was a little shorter. But that's not enough. That's nothing to really yeah. like. Oh, I can't read this. It's he still very it. fine. The, the <laughs> bubbles are good. That's he what cut gets it. you. Oh my god! He's like, he kills mohawk. I'm not reading. Nope, I'm not, nope, 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 no more. <laughs> they cut his mohawk. Stabby stabs. <laughs> stabby stabs. Oh my god! I love that. At, towards the end, it's Moon Dragon and Croot, and all the stabbies are and sitting his, around. And <laughs> three or four of them. Yep. They're all like, "What?" <laughs> it's like, "What happened?" Yeah. But still, excellent read, man. Guardians, pick it up if you haven't already. Oh my god! If yeah, you're absolutely. just waiting on us to talk about it, hey man, you're welcome. This is good stuff. Yeah, it's fucking amazing. I love it, dude. Mm-hmm. I, I've never been a massive Guardians fan. Nope. Uh, I knew about them before the MCU, but this wasn't a group that like I wasn't rushing out to buy their comics. Okay. I really only read about them when they were in, in events and those crossovers where I kind of had to read them. Mm-hmm. So like I was very familiar with and them. And I, I actually prefer what the MCU has done because it's changed Star Lord to someone I like. Exactly. Star Lord was care a about complete the old alcoholic veteran. piece of shit. Yeah, I didn't like that. Yeah. I didn't like that Star Lord. I love the new way they've done. I love that they've taken inspiration from the MCU. Absolutely. I hope that they don't do it to Gamora because I think her comic. No, no, no. Way she's fine better. now. No, she's fine now. Yeah, she's I love fine her. Now. I hope they do it with Nebula because obviously she's the baddest she was woman great in the galaxy. MCU. The most dangerous woman in the galaxy. Mm-hmm. No, the deadliest. They, the most deadly. Most Sorry, deadly. Yeah. yeah. I hope they bring the Nebula uh, MCU version to the comics. I know she's a favorite of yours. Uh, we're gonna go ahead and. Just, <laughs> I, mean, I don't have much more to say, so that's a good point to head off on. You know what I mean? Mention Nebula, Josh. Like, all right, thanks for tuning in. This thanks podcast for is over. In. I mean, we we already surpassed the movie talk, so we're good, man. We <laughs> fade. Mean, we fanning, bro. Yeah, I don't really have anything else to say. Other than definitely pick it up. <laughs> <laughs> Definitely pick up uh, Guardians of the Galaxy and Absolute Carnage. It's uh, Donny Cates. You can't go wrong with that. Seriously, you can't. Nope. nope. I'm excited to read uh, shit. Might as well just fucking read 8 and uh, Silver Surfer Black 3 next. Oh, right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And then we I mean, obviously, we'll do AC as well. We're going to do some Carnage next soon, too. There'll be a second one out after Wednesday. Yep, we'll have two. Mm-hmm. That'll be the next one. Oh, my God. I can't wait to talk about that shit. Mm-hmm. Woo! But that'll be in a future episode. So thanks for tuning in, checking us out, and listening. Hope you enjoyed it. Hope you are reading these comics. If you have any comics you think that we would like, let us know. And uh, we'll check them out and tell you that you're dumb and we won't cover them. And honestly, you know, just stay fat, stay skinny, stay ugly, stay sexy. You know what I mean? Like, that's just how we do. All at the same time. All at the same time. Thanks for listening. Thanks for don't. <laughs>